folks, and welcome to this week's review, which would normally be hi-fi related, wouldn't it? But not this week. I thought I'd take a break because of Record Store Day. Now, I've been wanting to cover Record Store Day for some time, but it's, it's a bit of an awkward one to, to record and prepare for. I mean, the actual records, well, then you're not really allowed to look at them before the event. You could do a sort of, oh, I don't know, one of those sorts of image-based previews based on the website. But to actually look at the records, well, you're not really supposed to release those records before the day. And so I thought I'd do it this way. It's, as I'm making this video, it's, I don't know, 10 days or so after the event. And I have a few chums in the record label fraternity and they were very kind and dribbled through a selection of goodies and that's what i have here how many 16 i think lots of variety some well-known names there is a selection of quirky i'm desperately trying to say the word properly at all quirky i think is the term Eccentric, exotic, there's a whole range of bits and bobs. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to look at this time around. And I will bring the records to camera. A lot of them are sealed in shrink wrap. But just for you, dear viewer, just for you, I will rent that asunder and bring the records and the vinyl itself and any inserts to camera. You can have a little looky. And we'll go from there. Now, the most recent Record Store Day took place on the 23rd of April 2022 here in the UK. And I've managed, as I say, to collect several highlights to show you. Now, before we get stuck in, though, some of you out there might not know what Record Store actually is and what it's all about. So if you're unaware of Record Store Day, well, what is it? Well, it's a one day of the year event when over 260 independent record shops all across the UK come together to celebrate being an independent record shop. Basically, the day brings public attention to these worthy record heroes mm -hmm. and hopefully brings some much needed pennies to the coffers. And well, God bless them, I say. Record shops, to my mind, are some of the most important retail sources around. Clothes shops, food shops, who needs them, hey? Who needs them? Because, after all, music is my food of love, and music is the thing that keeps me warm, at least. OK, the jumper helps a little bit. Anyway, where was I before the Shakespearean soliloquy? Well, yes, special vinyl releases, that's what I was going to talk about, are made exclusively for the day, Record Store Day, and should only be available in store, and should not be open for order or reserve. They should be available on a first come, first served basis. Stores who flout the rules can be banned from future record store day events. So it's a pretty organized thing. And this is why you see long queues outside record shops on the morning of record store day, just before opening time. Now, you might be able to buy record store day releases online, but that only should occur after Record Store Day, or RSD, as I'm going to call it now, because it's exhausting saying Record Store Day all the time, after RSD itself has finished. Many participating shops and cities host artist performances and events to mark the occasion, which is all very nice. Thousands more shops celebrate the day around the globe in what's become one of the biggest annual events of the music calendar. Mm. Now, the event itself was conceived in 2007 at a gathering of independent record store owners as employees wanted a way to celebrate and spread the good word about nearly 1,400 independently owned record stores in the USA. At that time, 
and thousands of similar stores internationally. The very first record store day took place in April 19th, I think it was, 2008. Today there are RSD participating stores on every single continent, except Antarctica. Well, they're working on it. Cold Wave would do well there, I hear, and I believe the Icicle Works are putting on a benefit to be supported by Snow Patrol, while Vanilla Ice is looking to make a comeback to an audience of excited penguins. Finally, and there's one serious bit of news I have to add before I let you see the records themselves. Due to manufacturing delays at pressing plants, which is an increasingly common situation these days, some titles will arrive late and will instead be available on the 18th of June 2022. You can check the RSD list below in the description for more information on titles that are affected. So, if you were previously unaware of Record Store Day, here's a selection of the sort of thing you could have bought. Also, if you're a more experienced RSD buyer, here's a few items you may have missed. Even if you knew of the following that you're about to have a gander at, this closer look view might give you a little bit more insight on the items themselves. Who knows, you might be able to pick them up later on if you're lucky. So, let's get stuck in. First up, and I don't know if there's any glare on this because there is shrink wrap on this. Well, just for now. I'll get rid of it in a second. Let's see if I move that around. At least you get a little look. <laughs> anyway, this is Catherine Williams, and the album is called Introduction, and it's from One Little Independent. Now, Catherine Williams is a singer-songwriter from my hometown of Liverpool in the UK. Now, unlike some of the contemporary, super fragile singer-songwriters you hear nowadays who seem to be on the verge of collapsing like a pack of cards in a frantic, nervous breakdown. Williams balances an inner strength with vulnerability. She has released a slew of albums in the past, and this release is a, well, it's a sort of compilation because it takes one track from each of those albums and stuffs them onto this single disc, which would make this album release number 13, because this is a 12-tracker. Although I thought she produced more albums than that. I thought it was 15. Maybe someone out there can tell me. Maybe I've got that wrong. I probably have. Next up, we have this dinky little 7-inch from Blondie. It's the single Sunday Girl from Chrysalis. This double seven inch package, and that's what it is, it's a double seven inch package. It celebrates the band single Sunday Girl, as I've said, which was a UK and worldwide number one, released in 1979. This is a bespoke deluxe four track single set in a rather nice gate fold sleeve. Disc one features the original single, plus the French version on red coloured vinyl. Disc 2 features two previously unreleased tracks on yellow coloured vinyl, a demo from 1978 and a live version recorded at the Paramount Theatre Portland, Oregon in January 1979. And when I take this shrink wrap I will be saving the sticker on the front, so never fear, I will be retaining all the good stuff. And next we have the legendary John Barry, an original soundtrack this time from a film named The Tamarind Seed. This is from the UK label Silver Screen. Now, for many years now, John Barry enthusiasts throughout the world have waited for an officially sanctioned album release of this 1974 score, The Tamarind Seed. Many thought that the LP would never actually happen because only sections of the master tapes, well, only sections have been traced. There's not much actually been discovered. And yet, here we are. Starring Julie Andrews and Omar Sharif, the film was a sort of romantic spy movie in a Cold War setting, directed by Blake Edwards. 
Though an official soundtrack album was apparently never planned, the tracks selected for this release include all the major cues used in the film, together with Wilma Reading's commercially released single, Play It Again, two different versions of The End, another track, as performed by Danny Street, plus different versions of both main and end title themes. And this being silver screen, there is no shrink wrap there. Rather eco-friendly is silver screen, so what they have instead is a paper band to keep the gatefold, and this is a gatefold sleeve, in place. And I'll bring that closer to you and you can have a little gander. And next we have Wild Willie Barrett. The album is called That's What It's All About and it's on the Stuff and Muck label. And some people will say, who? Well, Barrett was best known for his work with punk eccentric John Otway. And Barrett is another oddity, although a lovable one. We must say this. He covers folk and blues and punk and pop and some psychedelia and lots and lots of humour. He's also an accomplished woodworker. This coloured vinyl one-off pressing features brand new solo material and it's been recorded in Wild Willie Barrett's home studio and features a host of homemade instruments including his electric thumbless guitar, the Wah Wah Wheelie Bin and an old boot with a screwed on tambourine. You can see the style here can't you? Next, a little special thing for film fans, and especially films of John Carpenter and the film Escape from New York. This is another issue from the UK label Silver Screen. And here it is. It's a, well, it's a neat little seven-inch single for you. What we have here is the main theme from the original soundtrack. The single has the film's main title, and on the B-side we have a track called Bank Robbery. John Carpenter's Escape from New York was released in 1981. And uh, well, in addition, just as a little bonus extra if you're interested, originally released on the 31st of July 2015, the vinyl LP edition mirrored the expanded CD release from 2000 with over 20 minutes of previously unreleased music, plus music from scenes deleted from the final print, and original dialogue highlights. The masters were remixed from the original multi-track session tapes by longtime Carpenter associate Alan Howarth. Next up we have a 10-inch release from a Dutch band called Shocking Blue called At Home The Singles from Music on Vinyl. Now Shocking Blue was yes a Dutch rock band. They were from The Hague and they were at their peak in the 60s and the 70s and gained a oh, pretty significant cross-Atlantic success. The band was founded in 1967 and gained lots of popularity shortly after recruiting vocalist Mariska Verez. With their single Venus, they became the first Dutch band ever to reach number one on the American Billboard Hot 100. The band had a series of subsequent hits but disbanded in 1975. Their tracks have been sampled by, well, quite a lot of people really. The Prodigy is one, uh, Nirvana, they covered them. Bananarama, of all people. Their compositions were heavily featured on numerous films, commercials, and TV shows, including the recent series The Queen's Gambit. This 10 inch compilation features four bonus tracks that were previously available as B sides on, well, various long out of print 7 inch singles. All the tracks here are newly remastered from the first generation master tapes featuring the original mixes by a chap named Robbie Van Leeuwen. 3,000 of these were printed, which is pretty limited in, well, in today's limited releases. Hey, I've seen limited releases of like 50,000. There's only 3,000 of these. And next up we have Les Baxter with an album called K-Mango, I think it's K-Mango, on the vinyl Exotica label. And this is it, and indeed, we are going exotic. This is a single disc green vinyl LP, and I'll show you the green vinyl in a second. It's 1970, folks. Cast your mind back. And famed Exotica composer Les Baxter is tempted back into the studio to record an album that marks his return to the genre that defined his fame. The resulting release, K-Mango, K-Mango. 
combines 50s atmosphere with 60s surf music and 70s funk, so a heady combination. This release is remastered from the original tapes, is presented on coloured vinyl, as I say, and includes some, and I quote, carefully selected bonus tracks. Now, some pieces of music form part of the national fabric. They are imbued with tradition and absolutely soaked with sentiment. This is one of them. It's by a chap you may not, well, you may not have heard the guy's name before. We're talking about Ronald Binge. Oh yes, this particular 7-inch is called Sailing By. Now, that will trigger a few notable memories in some of you. The music Sailing By is the music played every night at 12.46 a.m. on BBC Radio 4 to herald the reading of the late night shipping forecast. This is the original version of Sailing By. It's been on Radio 4 for decades. It's a, well, it's a long-running tradition. And it's also never before been released on vinyl. Well, here it is. Incidentally, Sailing By was chosen by celeb Brit popper Jarvis Cocker as his final track and the one he would take with him on Desert Island Discs. Now, on the flip, you'll find a selection of music known as Elizabethan Serenade. And you might be saying, what on earth's that? Well, I'm here to tell you it's one of the most well-known and loved pieces of light music ever made. And it's also been produced by Mr. Binge. Check it out quickly on YouTube right here and now. And you'll say, ah, oh, yeah, I know that one. It's one of those pieces of music. I'll hang around. If you want to go check it right now and come back, then I'll wait for you. Yeah, okay, see? Told you, didn't I? Anyway, that's Ronald Binge. And, well, he was a major figure in music. We should all be more binge, I reckon. Now, as I say, Sailing By is a total classic, a tradition. Elizabethan Serenade, in case you'd like to know, actually won Binge an Ivan Novello Award, and he had chart successes in Germany, recorded by Gunter Kalman and his choir, I believe. It was a hit in South Africa. The work also had lyrics added in German, Czech, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, and Dutch, and Danish, and French. And this vinyl, which has obviously sailing by on the A side, is numbered and arrives on coloured vinyl. And I'm not sure if I should play this or frame it. Next up we have Stevie Nicks. Yes, the Fleetwood Mac lady, Stevie Nicks, and her debut album on Atco Belladonna, released in 1981. And it includes well-known tracks such as Leather and Lace that features Eagle Man Don Henley, and Edge of Seventeen, featuring Tom Petty. This edition is offered on black vinyl over two discs. The first disc is the album. The second disc provides a selection of bonus tracks that I think were first seen on the 3CD Deluxe Edition. Maybe you can confirm that for me. I think that's the case. Anyway, this package as is appears on vinyl for the first time. This next one is just a quickie. It is by Mike Oldfield. Did I ever tell you I met Mike Oldfield? I was doing um, I was doing some PR for him for a computer game, and I can't remember what it was called now. Going back a bit, nineties sometime, and I went to his house, and I had to go in the servants' entrance. <laughs> He wouldn't let me in the front door. <laughs> he obviously knew me. He obviously saw me coming. He said to himself, he looks shady. He's coming in the servant's entrance. And I did. And we sat there in his beautiful studio. And he makes the worst cup of tea I've ever had. I want to say now, it's official on YouTube. Mike Ofield makes a terrible cup of tea. And he's also as deaf as a post because whenever he turned away to refer to his notes or whatever, and we were chatting, he couldn't hear a thing. 
So I had to wait for him to look back at me. As is often the case, I think Pete Townsend has this problem. It's that old 70s rock star thing, you know? The ears. Hearing just goes. Anyway, where was I? Yes. <laughs> Tubular Bells 2 is now out. Let me go get it. There we are. Tubular Bells 2. It's a 1992, I think it is, sequel to the Storming original, which was 1973, was it? And there's not a great deal of difference from the original pressing of Tubular Bells, Tubular Bells 2, if I can say the word, and this one. In terms of content, I don't think there's any difference at all. However, it's still nice because you get a rather nice coloured disc, the actual vinyl itself. And that can be either dolphin or cool blue, so I hear. So, the shrink wrap is still on this one. Let's see which one it is, shall we? And here it is. I don't know whether that's cool blue or dolphin, or whether it's just one colour and they've given it an either or name. Hey, Bob, is this cool blue? Well, I don't know, Alan. It could be dolphin. Hmm, let's say both. It could be that. So, it's got a nice textured look about it. Anyway, very lovely indeed. That's Tubular Bells 2. Rather gorgeous. But yeah, that tea. If he ever offers you one, make your excuses. And now we have the replacements and an album called Unsuitable for Airplay, The Lost KFAI Concert. This one has been released by Rhino. Last year, I'll give you a bit of context, the band released a deluxe edition of the debut 1981 album called no, hang on, what was it called? Sorry, Ma, forgot to take out the trash. That formed a reissue of the original album on vinyl, and you also got a very nice collection of four CDs of rarities and extras. One of those CDs featured this live outing, a previously unreleased concert. Here it's available as a double album. It was from 1981 live show, as I say, and it's on this vinyl format for the very first time, so I believe. Now, it's one of the very earliest soundboard recordings of the band and features the original lineup and 27 songs, so they really gave it a go. This is the final remnants, the sort of last remaining remnants of the band itself being a sort of simple punky bar band before they got the contract and features a slew of covers and highlights from their earlier repertoire. And next we have a Universal release and Frankie Goes to Hollywood, called Altered Reels. This is the first time on vinyl for the much sought-after cassette mixes of Two Tribes and Relax, plus B-sides with new artwork. So, you get 10 tracks, which includes things like War and Ferry Cross the Mersey and One February Friday, and a track called Later On. And next we have some jazz for you jazz fans out there. This is the Howard McGee Quintet called Music from The Connection on the Icon label. I-K-O-N, Icon. Now, Music from The Connection is, as I say, jazz album by trumpeter Howard McGee, in case you're wondering what did he play. He's a very respected, or was a very respected, bebop trumpeter. This album was recorded on the 13th of June... 13th of June 1960, and it was released on the Felstead label. Felstead, were they an imprint of Decca? I can't remember. Scrub that, I'm guessing. Anyway, it features performances by McGee and also Tina Brooks, Freddie Red, Milt Hinton, and Ozzy Johnson. The album featured music from the off Broadway play The Connection. That's what this was. It was a Broadway play, or off-Broadway play, by Jack Gelber, featuring music composed by Mr. Red. We have another original soundtrack and another release from the UK label Silver Screen. This one is based on the film The Hitcher, and it's been produced by Mark Isham. Now, The Hitcher was, it was badly received, gotta say, when it was initially released in 1986, but it's gained a sort of cult following from there on in. Now, the film starred Rutger Hauer as a murderous hitchhiker in a relentless pursuit of a young motorist, C. Thomas Howell. Isham was told by the suits that he must produce a Jaws-like copycat score. But Isham, 
very wisely indeed decided to go his own way and used samples and electronics. He said, and I quote, at the time, technically, the music business was in a crossroads and new instruments and new instrument technologies were appearing every day. I availed myself of this new technology of sampling and brought in two drummers who played only original sampled drums. I was still using my early system of a Prophet 5, an Oberheim 4 voice, and my ARP 2600. To this, I added this new keyboard, a Prophet 2000 sampler, and that was my band. Unavailable for, poor, 30 years. This is the first ever official vinyl release. Two more to go, and we have a release from U2, a celebration from the Island label. Now, this is the 40th anniversary edition of the single, A Celebration, which was originally released in 1982. Now, this is a four-track EP containing two previously unreleased recordings. Now, even though I personally bought the first two U2 albums, I wouldn't really call myself a fan. I've sort of, well, I've sort of gone off them as time's gone on, I must admit. Even so, my favourite U2 song of all time is here on the B-side in two forms. Two versions of the track, Trash, Trampoline and The Party Girl. It's an absolute classic. You also get a studio outtake of the A-side. And finally, we have Def Leppard. This is a picture disc, as you can see, and it's from the album High and Dry, or rather this is the album High and Dry from Mercury as a picture disc. Now, this was Def Leppard's second album, and it was released in 1981, and was the first produced by the legendary Robert Mutt Lang. This was the band doing their working class hard rock thing, with a sort of stadium vibe, I suppose. It was an album that cemented the band's status in both the UK and America, although MTV helped a lot on that score. This version is presented for the first time as a picture disc. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed my little RSD collection. Hopefully next time around I can do another one. Now if you want to navigate around this video, and there might be one of those where you might just want to do that, then look below and there are a number of chapter headings you can click upon, and you can navigate here and there around this video. As I say, check down there below for a host of other links. My Patreon page is there, and Patreon previews part one is now live. I'm looking at a prototype of an undisclosed company. I'm not sure I should say who it is right now, but you can find out if you look at the Patreon previews. As I say, looking at a prototype of hopefully a forthcoming review, a hardware review in the near future with a bit of luck. I've also got some information and news about possibly disturbing shortages in terms of hi-fi and vinyl so check that out be interested to see what you think there are also links down below for my website there's all kinds of stuff on there you don't see on this channel and other social media areas i'm lounging within and <laughs> that was difficult wasn't it and in addition to that what else have we got yeah my facebook page which your facebook group rather not page there's a page or a Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Anyway, I'll be back with Tuneful Tuesday. I think we have another music magazine. So if you want to have a look at that, tune in for Tuneful Tuesday. And I hope to have your company then. Until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.